you've all seen now the interviews that Tadi Hashi coach has given about um, uh, October 7th and about Israel. He's got this book out where he basically admits to it being 100% one sided on the side of the Palestinians, a, a complete hack job. He knows nothing about Israel, he knows nothing about the Middle East, and yet he's written a book completely supporting the Palestinians, calling Israel an apartheid state, siding with the Palestinians across the board, and yet he's completely ignorant of, of so much of what happens there, the history and everything else, and he admits so. It's not like he's hiding this. He actually uh, admits it. Um, Tennessee Coates has a history around this. He, he is so engaged or... I don't know if you know who Tennessee Coates is. We talked about him quite a bit uh, during uh, Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, Tennessee Coates, Tennessee Coates is an interesting black intellectual, um, a, a, a complete creature of the, I think, the, the grievance mentality that sadly so many black intellectuals in America have. Uh, Coates um, is a beautiful writer. He writes beautiful prose and has used that to express his frustration with America. Uh, and often some, some of it is very effective in case of what he says and how he says it and in terms of bringing out real issues about America and about its attitudes towards race in the past. But... Coates is also very bad on these issues. You know, one of the, one of the examples of this is his attitude towards 9-11, um, where he basically says he doesn't care. Um, you know, uh, he, he writes, damn it all, I could see no difference between the officer who killed Prince Jones and the police who died, or the firefighters who died. They were, they were not human to me, black, white, whatever, they were the menace of nature. They were the fire. They were the comet, the storm, which could, with no justification, shatter my body. So, uh, you know, they're all part of America, which is responsible for slavery, which is responsible for violence against blacks, and therefore 9-11, any kind of horrific, is, is justified, and he cannot, or at least he can't feel sympathy for anybody. Uh, no matter what the color of the skin, he can't feel sympathy for anybody who is a victim of this, if they're not willing, I guess, to fight uh, for reparations for blacks. I mean, Tennessee Coates is a big, maybe probably the most uh, vocal and articulate uh, intellectual voice for reparations, for reparations. Um, so, um, Anyway, that is Tennessee Coates, and um, he's been on a book tour, and he did an uh, interview with CBS, and uh, he also did one, uh, uh, you know, later on with uh, Noah Smith, and um, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, in, in in the Noah Smith interview, he says basically that he cannot guarantee that if he was in Gaza. And, it, you know, if, if he was as, as persecuted as the Gazans are, that he wouldn't go out and rape and pillage and murder uh, uh, on October 7th, that he wouldn't have joined the, the people doing that. And in, in, in that sense, he couldn't condemn it. I mean, this is just evil, evil, evil stuff, horrible, horrible, horrible stuff that Coates has been spewing on in the various media outlet all over the place. Anyway, that, that's a big story. It relates to Tennessee, but I also wanted to point out a story about CBS, and that is the, in the interview with CBS, in the interview with CBS, um, the interviewer pushed back against Tennessee Coates. He did what a good interviewer does, particularly when a book is unbelievably, crazily biased. And the interviewer pushed back, but not in a, in a friendly, journalistic, interview, friendly interview style. 
Coates did not seem defensive, did not seem offended. Trevor Noah, not Noah Smith, sorry. The, the interview was Trevor Noah. Um, but anyway, some people at CBS felt offended by the fact that Tennessee Coates was being pushed back. Now, part of that is because I think the people at CBS are pro-Palestinian and how they, you push back about somebody standing up for the Palestinians. But I also think that a big part of the pushback was because Tennessee Coates is a hero of kind of Black Lives Matter and the whole, I, I think, the whole movement around Black Lives Matter and, 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 and uh, black, black identitarianism and uh, grievances. And therefore, how dare you push back against Tennessee Coates? Who's this? And the interviewer, who did a, fantastic, a, a good job, I thought he was a little mild, was reprimanded for how he conducted the interview that he was too aggressive, too, too aggressive towards Tanahashi Coates, should have been more accommodating. So that's pretty disgusting and awful. And of course, unsurprising, it's CBS News. It's part of the big three that have been basically uh, biased to the left for, I think, since they came into existence. But it's just gotten worse over time as the whole media landscape has shifted uh, leftwards, at least the big media. But this is CBS, so it shouldn't surprise anybody. But then I found this other story that I found, wow, this is kind of interesting. I thought, so it turns out CBS is um, about to be sold. Uh, CBS is part of, and, and I think this is right, is part of Paramount, right? Um, it's, I mean, it just, yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's part of Paramount. And Paramount is just about to be sold, including CBS, to a company called Skydance. Skydance... Um, is owned by David Ellison. David Ellison is the son of Larry Ellison, one of the richest people in the world, a billionaire founder of Oracle. Larry Ellison, who has provided a lot of the funding behind Skydance's purchase of Paramount, which includes CBS, Larry Ellison is a huge supporter of Israel, has been for decades. Financial supporter, ideological supporter. Larry Ellison is also, you know, one of the founders, of, one of the great uh, entrepreneurs of Silicon Valley, a gazillionaire and a free market guy, generally, broadly speaking, and very, very pro-Israel. So soon, the people of CBS are going to be owned by a very pro-Israel, and I think Larry Ellison is probably also pro-Trump, but certainly pro-markets, not pro-the left on economic issues and on issues like Israel, and yet Larry Ellison is going to own CBS. It's like Elon Musk owning Twitter, something like that. So um, rumors have it that uh, once the deal goes through in the first quarter or early second quarter of next year, the Ellisons are thinking of blowing up CBS, basically replacing everybody and uh, changing, uh, changing a lot of stuff. Remember, CBS also owns uh, 60 Minutes. CBS is a news powerhouse. Um, and it's going to be... Really, really, really interesting, right? Uh, to see how all this goes. Uh, uh, Skydance is buying CBS uh, and Paramount from uh, some Redstone. Some Redstone is the daughter of the media magnate Redstone, who built this massive empire. Um, anyway, it's going to be really interesting uh, how CBS is going to evolve 
once it has these uh, new owners, uh, once uh, Skydance is, uh, is the new owner of CBS. But this is one of the beauties of capitalism. You don't like the way media is run? Start a competitor. Maybe it's easier just to buy one of the media companies instead of starting a competitor. Maybe just doing it. Right? Yeah, I know that Larry Ellison attacked Microsoft during uh, the antitrust in the 90s. A lot of people attacked Microsoft back then. A lot of so-called free market libertarians did. Um, it doesn't change the fact, um, you know, so did Mark Andreessen, so did, uh, what's his name, who ran Sun, Sam McNeely. They all attacked Microsoft, sadly. But doesn't change the fact that, you know, Larry Ellison is considered a small L libertarian, certainly not a, a leftist and somebody who um, could very well, could very well change the media landscape in America. Uh, now he's getting old, and I don't know his son's politics, and I don't know what his son intends to do, but I did find it interesting um, that CBS is in a precarious position right now.